What is going on everybody? Yvonne here. Now, as you guys have probably heard, Apollo.io is a very powerful sales intelligence and engagement platform. Essentially, it can help you guys' business to do pretty much everything A to Z when it comes to anything outreach related. However, one of the most powerful features that it has in store is its ability to automate you guys' follow-ups through sequences. And in this video, we're going to walk you guys through step-by-step -step on how to set up you guys' sequences so your guys' follow-ups are going to be fully automated. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And if you guys want to follow along with what I'm doing or even try out the platform for yourself, feel free to check out the link down in the description for a free trial of the platform. Once you guys click on that link, it's really straightforward. Go ahead and type in the email that you guys want to use, sign up for free, and you guys be ready to rock. Alrighty, now once you guys make an account, this is how you guys' dashboard is going to look like. There's going to be lots of different options here for you guys, like people, companies, lists, stat enrichment, but the place where you really want to go to is going to be sequences. And essentially, a sequence is just a series of emails. So right over here, I have a sequence that I personally use myself whenever I was reaching out to different marketing leaders of various companies. So right over here, the very first email that was inside of that sequence is going to be that initial email and I was making sure that that email has a lot of personalization in it and as you guys see as we scroll down here the second the third and the fourth email are all going to be follow-up emails and their main purpose was to actually get time on the call with the prospect but again I fully understand that everybody is going to have a different goal when it comes to their sequence and that's the first thing you should be figuring out what is your goal because for some people they get a lot of inbound traffic so we just want to send out follow-up emails to make sure that someone actually books time with you guys however if you guys have ever sent a cold email you probably know that people don't respond to you right away so you do need to send a couple of follow-ups to make sure that they actually read your guys' messages. Now, the second step is actually going to be building the thing. So as you guys see right over here, I have a ton of different A-B tests when it comes to that very first email. And the reason behind that is because we don't really know what's going to stick and what's not when it comes to your guys' first email. So what I would do is I would send a lot of different A-B tests right over here. And as I was sending out, you know, 20 to 50 emails, the ones that are working, I would double down on them. And the ones that weren't, I would cut them short. And that's why I have a lot of different A-B tests that have, you know, 23, 20, 29, 19 emails sent out and I could constantly keep iterating to see which ones actually work the best. And when I say the word best, that can mean a lot of different things. For example, certain folks may only look at open rates, right? Making sure that people are actually opening up their emails. However, a lot of times people are also looking at link clicks to see if people are actually engaging with your guys' content. As you guys see this right over here, this specific email had 4% of spam blocked emails. So I was like, this is not a good fit. We got to turn it off. And that was kind of my logic behind all of them as I wanted to make sure that they actually get a high open open rate and that people are actually interacting with them in one way or another. So let's actually see what the cold emails actually entail. So right over here, it said first names, marketing efforts. And when I say first name, that was the first name of the prospect. Now the place where it actually borrows all that information from is going to be LinkedIn, but that's a video for another topic. So as we click on this email right over here, we see that it says first name, marketing efforts. So for example, if we're sending it to Marcus Carter, he's going to say Marcus's marketing efforts. So hi, Marcus, I know you're really busy and get a ton of emails. So this will only take 30 seconds to read, right? And that was kind of like the hook that I was trying to go for. And then the reason why I'm reaching out. So I was explaining what I'm doing and what company I'm reaching out from. So right over here, I was listing the reason why I was reaching out right away. Because if you guys include it later in your guys' email, people are just not going to read it. And I was also putting the name of their company right over here to give a feeling that this email is going to be personalized for them. And later in the email, I would explain what I do and how I work. And then at the end, there was a link to actually snack the time with me. So let's go ahead and get out of that. But what happens after that first email goes out, right? How do we actually follow up from there? So as we scroll down, we can actually see that there is a follow-up schedule to deliver this email if no reply in two days. And of course, you can modify these settings right over here. So if I go to the actions, I press edit, I can actually modify where I can make it three days, four days, whatever it may be. And if we click right over here as well, and as you guys see right over here, it says, hi, first name, I know you're super busy, so no pressure to respond, right? And then from there, I'm just sending a generic follow-up. But the whole point of this is that this thing is going to go out automatically without you guys needing to manually send out every single email. And it's going to go out to those people that are not going to respond to you guys for two days. And then from there, if they don't respond in three days, then they're going to get even another follow up. So at this point, there's going to be one, two, three, four emails they are going to be sent their way. So hopefully they're going to respond to one of them. And when it comes to your guys' follow ups, I would have different ones that you're actually sending out. For some of them, it may be a value add. Like, for example, if you notice something within their business that they're missing, you can actually include that in your guys' follow up. And then from there on, they can actually get the value that comes behind it. For others, it can be simple and pretty straightforward follow up just because so many emails just get lost in the inbox nowadays so it can be pretty straightforward and sometimes and this is usually one of my last follow-up i like to send like a quote quote breakup email where i give them a couple options as you guys see right over here like i, I want to talk timing is not right thinks i'm not interested in this and that just makes their life easier and through these three options it just makes life easier for everybody because if timing is wrong right i kind of know to reach out at a better date if this is something they're completely not interested in they're probably going to reply with a three right they're not interested or they're not the right person or they're going to say unsubscribe but if they do want to 
talk, then it's going to be the best option. They're going to choose number one. I want to talk. So let's schedule a chat right over here. And as you guys are sending out your guys' emails, I would always make sure to actually send a B test. And pretty much what that means is there's going to be multiple versions of that email that go out. And from there, you kind of see which one is working and which one's not. This is what I was describing right over here when it comes to that first initial email. And so as we scroll down here at a B tests, pretty straightforward, you can go ahead and modify the subject and actually modify the email that you guys are sending out. This is what I was talking about, because if we create these AB tests, we can go ahead and modify the subject, modify the actual email and the contents in it. And once we turn it on, emails are going to go out in that specific AB test. And the cool part about it is that you can actually see all the analytics behind all of you guys' AB tests. And that way you can kind of know what's working, what it's not. And the system is actually sending more emails towards the ones that are performing better than others. And lastly, I wanted you guys to remember to not only rely on email. Now, what I mean by that is the fact that if you guys are only sending out emails, then the prospect is actually only seeing you guys from one channel. However, throughout my time in working in sales, what I've noticed works the best is whenever you kind of combine different channels to work with one another and make sure that you guys connect your guys' Apollo to a CRM like HubSpot. And that way, all of you guys' communications when it comes to you guys' calls, when it comes to you guys' SMS, emails are all going to be under one roof. And there you guys have it. As you guys saw, utilizing Apollo sequences can dramatically increase your guys' engagement when it comes to your guys' outreach. A well-structured sequence that's also personalized can go a really long way and is going to help you guys close a lot more deals. And if you guys want to try out the platform for yourself, the link for it is going to be below down in the description. So if you guys found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this as it tremendously helps support the channel. Till next time, peace.